Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part 4 of the 12 inch Admiral color restoration. In the last video we worked on the little cluster of power supply caps that you see over here. And off camera I replaced the uh, other gray doohickus that's there. Today we're going to see about uh, replacing this can and then working on replacing any busted resistors. I believe somebody mentioned there was a cracked one down here. 27k or something, replacing all the electrolytics and the low voltage supply and doing any touch up solder work. Now as far as replacing this can, this one's fairly easy because it's simply a two section can with the same value. And if we look down in here, that's the little bugger in question right there. So this is just going to be a fairly easy to do type thing. Yeah, and I'm probably going to end up doing like I did with the last one, which is just cutting the uh, twist lock bits at the base of the can and wiring this up together. And then as far as the, uh, the rest of the electrolytics, we'll need to make a map and we'll need to figure out what we're going to need, at least in, uh, well figure out what we're going to need. Let's just leave it at that and then we'll work on the soldering process. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the wires here and then cut the resistor out and then uh, get the can out. So let's go ahead and proceed on that. And since these are both the same value cap, I'm not really too worried about getting this mixed up. And there's enough room over here that I can probably just mount a little terminal strip somewhere along here and put the two values there. There's just a little 10 ohm resistor that goes between the two of them. It's not much to it. So now that we've got these cut out Let's go ahead and start prying up the can and we'll probably have to cut the rim off like we did the other one. So with like the last one, this is the weak part of this rim right here. So I'm just going to get underneath it and pry it up enough to get the uh, Dremel tool up in here. And then we can focus on cutting off what's left of the can. So I'm just going to do some gentle prying because we discovered before that this uh, metal's a little weak. And we can see it's starting to come up over there. Alright, so let's get our Dremel tool. And we'll aim it at the black base here so you can see me slicing up the... Uh, tabs here and this may or may not work well I may have to pry it up a little more but we'll see As you can see I'm not getting far enough in there to get to it so we're gonna have to play the pry game a little bit more Violence. Sometimes it's the answer. Alright, there's one. Let's see if we can get at this one. Most excellent. Now, of course, do remember to wear eye protection when you're doing stuff like this because. If you don't, you'll likely get little metal shards in your eyes, which is always fun. I'm going to try to fatigue what's left here because it's obviously not possible for me to get the Dremel back here or back here. 
Yep, it's coming loose. There we go. All right, so that's out. And we can go ahead and shave down the left of what's left there. See if I can position this better for you guys. And then we'll just grind down these bits here. Now the reason why I do that really isn't for anything more than just safety purposes because if you've got big sharp jagged edges the last thing you want to do is slice yourself open on some sharp metal. Otherwise grinding that down really doesn't have much meaning other than for safety. Just clear the garbage away. So I think what we'll do now uh, we'll take some brief measurements on a terminal strip that will mount underneath. And uh, once we figure out where that goes, we'll drill a hole, uh, run some hardware through it to mount the terminal strip, and then we should be good. So we can't really do anything over here because I don't want to drill into the high voltage cage for fear of running into something I can't see. And I have a little bit of room, like over here. I could probably drill a hole, see if we can shed some light onto this a little bit better. I could probably drill a hole like right there, mount it up there, and then stick our two capacitors in. Uh, how much slack do I have? Oh, I got plenty of slack because there's still a wire wrap over here. So, let me see. Let me mount that right about there. Let's make a little mark for a pilot hole. That should be fine. Yeah, let's get a drill in a bit. Alright, so I'm going to take my drill and drill a hole here. So maybe I can hold still long enough for that to work. It's getting too hot. That's some hard metal. Let me get some cutting oil. I'm just going to do a little bit of cutting oil on the drill tip here. Get something to clean up that mess. Okay. Now let me get some hardware. And we're going to put a lock washer between the terminal strip and the chassis. Let's thread that through. See if I can get that thread started. Crank that down. We got a nice 
ground connection there. So there's our terminal strip right up in there. And now I should be able to mount the capacitors. And I think for the sake of ease, I'm going to mount one from above. the excess here and then of course the other one we'll put underneath I'll put this up here like this get that to hang there for a second Set it up here like this. I'll just hold that there. And we'll solder that up. Solder that up. And I'll use this little bit here to make a jumper so that we ground the other one. If I can just get it to stay put long enough. Nope, doesn't want to stay put. Either that or solder wasn't very good. I'm going to go with the solder wasn't very good. Well, anyways, it's still in the hole. I'm just going to solder it down like this. And this way, we'll have a nice ground for that capacitor down there. Finish soldering the one that's standing up. Let's trim off this little bit here. And let me pull a little bit of wire slack through here so that we can attach this. nice when they include slack so that you can actually make it work for your application. Let's bend that over. Okay, and then we got the red one also needs some more slack but that's not impossible come on there we go 
And so then all we got to do is solder this in and then install the resistor. Okay. So now we'll take this fat resistor here. Scrape away the oxide on the connection. And let's see what we got to play with here. Probably not a whole lot. It's probably enough that I can make it hover below the uh, terminal strip. Let's see here. Give me a moment while I solder that resistor. Bend this out and away. And then we'll go ahead and solder this guy in. Which of course makes this one to pop out. Alright, looks pretty good. Far enough away from everything. So that should do it for the what it can there. You can see how that is. We got the one going through the hole up top. We got this one underneath. I got the grounds tied so that they go to the chassis like they're supposed to. And so now what we're going to do is uh, take an inventory of capacitors that we need for the main board, make a map, and then uh, perhaps start changing them out. So just looking at the top of the board, see that we have one here and there. Now we've got another one over here, one here, one hide back here, two here. I'm trying to see if there's any hidden in the back or front of the board that I'm not seeing. Oh, yeah, there's another one hidden down in here. Behind the shield, you might be able to see it there. And then uh, around here, there was a busted resistor, so we'll look at that too. So it looks to me about mm, eight capacitors total. You definitely have some service controls. There are some service controls here. Uh, there's one here that's not marked. There's one here that's AGC delay, which is tucked behind this rim here. And then you got this, which is AGC adjust, which we might play with a little bit. Uh, not sure what this guy is. There's one kicking around over here. Uh, yeah, so let's just take a quick look at uh, what we need for these. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make a quick map, and then uh, we'll start pulling up capacitors and seeing what their values are. So bear with me a moment here. I'm just going to draw a strip for the IF and the color section. Draw one there, one there. Yeah, we'll come back to this when I'm done, because this is boring. All right, so at a quick glance, this is what I got. I got 125 volts, 10 to 50 volts, hundreds at uh, 25 volts, two microfarad at 50 volts, a five at 50, and an eight at 50, which I'm just gonna round up to a 10. Now, hopefully, I mean, they got them marked clearly here on the board as to their polarity and everything, and I, Recorded that and noted that. 
but uh, hopefully the bottom side of the board is just as equally helpful, but I'm not counting, uh, counting my chickens before they hatch. And we can see the underside of the board is very congested. So <clears throat> I don't think it's going to be relatively easy. Let's just get up underneath here. I don't think it's going to be relatively easy to figure out which one's which because they just have symbols here. Like they've got a, a test point. They've got test point C2. And they got Q2 for a resistor. Uh, Q19, but there's no markings for the resistors and there's no markings for all but a few capacitors like C16 here uh, And if I reach around The board and look at C16. That's a film cap. So that's not even what I'm looking for So this is going to be a little bit tricky, but I think what I'm going to do is uh, It's probably going to take me quite a bit of time to trace down and do all these and I'm not going to do that on the camera because that's just torture so I am going to pull and replace all these electrolytics and then uh, once we've done that uh, then I can work on uh, finding that bad resistor and changing that as well all right so I got all of our little electrolytics changed out and there was something down here that somebody mentioned Cracked resistor of some kind. Let's see if we can uh, find it again here. I know somebody mentioned it. I'm going to have to go back through that video and. Uh, see where that was because right now I'm not seeing it although my memory says that yeah somebody pointed that out and I said huh that does look like a crack yeah not sure I'm going to try getting some much brighter lights on it that it back there maybe that's just dust brush this off a little bit <sighs> still not finding it I know it was around this area Yeah, let me go look back at the old video real quick and see what somebody told me it was. So there's the screenshot from the video. And uh, it was one next to one of the electrolytics that I replaced. And we can see if we zoom in there, there's your crack. And since that's near what looks like uh, that capacitor I changed out number 76 so that would have been this guy yeah let's look at it from the other vantage just gonna make everybody nauseous here Huh. Or that was an artifact of dust. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. That's weird. Looks good there. Decidedly does not look good there. So was that dirt or crust or what is that? Because looking down there, that looks totally cool. Set this down a little bit. As I push on it and stuff, it's not developing any newer cracks. Or is that it right there? Can't get the damn camera to focus. 
All right, let's turn off the overhead lamp. And let's look at it with a flash. Yep, there's your crack. Now it's hard to tell if that's just in the paint or what. Uh, for my vantage, it looks just like the paint's cracked. Like it's not physically cracked. So that's supposed to be what, an 82 ohm resistor? Let's check it. Alright, so taking a measurement of this 67.9. That's in circuit, so that's probably fine. Because this little 100 ohm jobber is 74 in circuit. So I'm not going to worry about that. I think that was just an anomaly, an artifact of uh, dust and cracks in the little paint on the resistor. The resistor itself seems to be fine. So we're done with the uh, electrolytics here. Let me put this tube back in the sockets. I had to move aside for getting the camera down so we could see the board. Uh, so now I'm going to resolder the tube sockets, and then we need to address the tin control. And I'll go over that in just a moment because uh, the tin control that I put in there, which was a 50k, and I had gone off like a 25 or a 35k that I was measuring at the potentiometer. Well, long story short, taking the temp potentiometer out and cleaning the body enough that I could see the imprints on there, it was a 500 ohm potentiometer which uh, is obviously quite a bit smaller in value so what I did was I got this old vintage Clarostat 500 ohm very high quality and I'm hoping this will fit it was really inexpensive it's a really high quality pot and I'll see if we can get this to work in in there instead because obviously 50k is going to give me maybe like 10 degrees arc of adjustment. But let's get to uh, resoldering the tube sockets real quick. And maybe we'll save the tin control for the next episode before we put everything back together. Alright, so right now I'm just going to go over the board. Resolder the crummy tube sockets. And this could have been my own doing way back when. I don't remember. But regardless, they need to be done. The solder was really cheap looking. It was all crystallized and more flux than it was tin and rosin. Well, rosin is flux. Alright. Do these guys here. It's weird because this socket's ugly. I mean, it's just really bad. But this socket up here is soldered very nicely. And there's maybe like a little bit of touch up work I could do to this one, but otherwise, joints on that look really good. And then you come back over here to this awful thing, and this is just a, a big bubbly mess. In fact, let's get rid of some of that before we put new junk on top of old on this one that blob there needed to go yeah that blob needs to go There's just so much flux in this solder. It's just bubbling and like crazy. And the problem with excessive amounts of flux is you don't know how much actual solder there is to make an electrical connection. It could not be very much or it could be inadequate. Like here, you can see these gaps all around here. Maybe you can't because the wire's in the way. Or these dark gaps around the lead, suggesting that there isn't very much solder grabbing onto that post. Yeah, when it bubbles like crazy, it's just got too much flux in it. 
it just needs to go. I like the Kester solder. It's a very nice mix. It does real well. This is kind of frosty looking too again. Okie dokie. Let's see. There's this guy hiding over here. Let's see if we can get a little bit better view on that guy. trick here is getting it the socket soldered without all this stuff getting in the way because you could easily burn uh, burn your wiring harness or something like that Trying to move these aside so I can see what's going on here. Redo this one, not really happy with that one. Okay. Take a look around and see if there's any other parts of the board that need to be done. Any yeah, soldering up here around the rectifiers and such may be a problem later on, but that looks okay. So yeah, I think uh, I think the board work is done. I'm just kind of very briefly glancing at it, making sure I didn't miss anything critical. Oh, alright. So there's this here. This is a nice little short circuit. It's not supposed to be there. They got everything so densely packed. There's another short circuit. That's touching there. Lead dress that's too long. That there. See that? Touching that? Jeez. Wowee. So all these component leads are so long that it might have been my own fault in moving this around and servicing it that I got uh, some pieces to touch together. Got to very carefully look around, make sure there's no more leads shorting out against each other or anything like that. I'm glad I looked. And that's one reason why I don't like lead dress really long. It's when it's highly dense like this, you just wonder what's going to happen. I see a cracked solder joint here. Another questionable one here. One on this diode's not great. Okay. All right. Well, right now, I'm not seeing any additional scary things bent over or shorted out against something. That's pretty close. Yeah, let's trim these. They're getting close together. This connection up here could use a little more solder. Yeah, that's an example of bad board production. It was done really cheaply and 
probably rushed. They left the leads too long and that's just going to create a mess of problems like you saw. There was two connections easily that were bent over and shorting out against another trace and that will definitely cause issues and I don't know if those leads being bent over were a function of me messing around with a board during service interval or uh, if it was pre-existing and the reason why we've had color and video problems is because of strange little sort circuits in the low voltage areas but it's hard to tell right now I'm just kind of looking around the board and seeing if there's any more stuff here that's worth pursuing but so far everything looks okay so I think what I'm going to look at now is uh, we'll swap out that tint control really quick so you can see this is the 50k that I put in there which just ain't gonna work I had no idea it was supposed to be 500 ohms until I really got the pot cleaned up Ooh, that's hot. Them little ceramic caps sure do absorb heat really quick. Okay. I grab my box head wrench. I'll take this out. This obviously isn't going to do me any good in this circuit. But I can save it for something else. I'm just hoping the Clarostat fits in there since it has a slightly larger body than this. Let's see. I'm probably going to have to trim these guys off. In fact, why don't we just bend that down? Since I know that the centering is not going to be the same. Just give me a moment. Now we'll stick this guy in here and see if he fits. Yep, that'll work. Okay. And I'm going to have to machine down the shaft like I was the other 50K, but at least this one's the correct electrical value, which is really more important. This one needs the bigger of the two. All right. And so let's solder everything up here. And of course, this little capacitor doesn't want to cooperate with me. All right. There. That way we'll have the correctly functioning tint control. This must be a wire wound one. It feels like a wire wound. I'm still going to have to uh, machine the shaft down and obviously cut it down to the diameter where I can get the and put a slot in it so the knobs fit on it. But otherwise, it functions. I'm not going to cry about it too much. All right. So I think that's all I'm going to do for today. Uh, we've progressed a lot in this thing and I think in the next video we'll work on uh, seeing if I can run the damn thing without having to put it all back together but if not then we'll have to slide it back in the chassis and see how we did 
and then we can assuming it powers up and gives us a raster then we can start dialing things in and making it look better I may have to see if I can dig up a test jig adapter and use a test jig for this but we'll see anyways hope you guys enjoyed watching this segment more stuff to come